Sagas, Vamo was the Lion, or Sori, Sin, or Sabudo, or Nine, Prince, or Yvonne, Brethren, it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has commissioned us. He has put his seal upon us and given us his spirit in our heart as a guarantee. But I call God to witness against me. It would to spare you that I refrain from coming to Corinth, but that you but that we lord it over your faith, we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. For I made up my mind not to make another painful visit, for if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, 
so that when I came I might not be in pain by those who should have made me rejoice. For I felt sure of all of you that my joy would be the joy for you all. For I wrote you out of much affliction and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. For many are cold, but 
you are chosen. Rajya Gospel Svoj Mučenicima, Zizde Svetlo Svetu, ne može se grad sakriti kad na gori stoji, niti se pali sveća i stavlja pod sud, nego na svećnjak. Ste svetli svima koji su u kući, tako da svetli vaša svetlost pred ljudima, da vide vaša dobra dela i slave Otca vašega koji je na nebesima. Ne mislite da sam došao da ukinem zakon ili proroke, nisam došao da ukinem nego da ispunim, jer vam zaista kažem, dokle nebo i zemlja ne prođe, neće nestati nijedne joti ili jedne crtice i zakona dok se tvoje ne zbude. Ako dakle ko naruši jednu od ovih najmanjih zapovesti i nauči tako ljude, nazad će se najmanjim u Cvastu nebeskom. Ako izvrši i nauči, taj će se veliki nazvati u Cvastu nebeskom. Reši Gospod priču siju, Cvastu nebesne i podobne človeku carju который сделал брачный пир для сына своего и послал рабов своих звать званых на брачный пир, и не хотели прийти. Опять послал других рабов, сказал, «Скажите званным, вот я приготовил обед мой, тельцы мои, что откормлено за кого-то, и все готово, приходите на брачный пир». Но они, пренебрегши, то пошли кто на поле свое, а кто на торговлю свою, Прочи же, схватив рабов, его оскорбили и убили их. Услышав о сердце, царь разгневался и послал войска свои стремить убийц онных и жег город их. Тогда говорит он рабам своим, брачный пир готов, а званые не были достойны. Итак, пойдите на распутие всех, кого найдете, зовите на брачный пир. И рабыки, выйдя на дороги, собрали всех, кого только нашли, и злых, и добрых, и брачный пир наполнился возлежащими. Царь, войдя посмотреть возлежащих, увидел там человека, одетого не в брачную одежду, и говорит ему, «Друг, как ты вошел сюда не в брачной одежде?» Он же молчал. Тогда сказал царь слугам, Связав ему руки и ноги, возьмите его и бросьте в тьму кромешную, там будет плач и скрежет зубов, ибо много званых, а мало сути сбранных. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One of the great challenges of life, dear brothers and sisters, is to learn to size up, to gain the ability to see clearly what is at stake, what is important for us in the situations that we encounter on a daily basis. No doubt, experience is the great teacher in this regard, but it must be the right kind of experience. <clears throat> Otherwise, our bad habits create a second nature in us. Second nature to us, such 
that we will become blind, we become blind to whatever we have not seen before and what is truly good for us. We don't see it because of the second nature created by sin and bad habits in us. In today's gospel lesson, there were people so used to focusing on their daily routines, daily things, and worldly responsibilities, that they had lost the ability to recognize something new, joyful, beautiful, and beneficial to them. They fail to recognize and to respond to God's invitation to the banquet, to his heavenly kingdom, to for everyone is invited to the heavenly kingdom, all of the people of all generations on earth. Most probably this is the only invitation truly sent to everyone. And, but God does not shut us out of dinner. He is not the one who truly wants even to force us to respond to his invitation. We shut ourselves with our own excuses. And we know there are so many excuses that come to us to respond to God. And no doubt that God respects our free will, even when we reject his invitation. <clears throat> As you heard in today's gospel story, he got mad. Why? Because he cared about everyone that is invited. We know that God was extending invitation to the chosen nation first when he came to earth, to the Jewish people. But unfortunately, most of them did not respond to that invitation. And he sent his disciples to teach all the nations of the world, to invite everyone born on earth. What is, <clears throat> let us see what is the heavenly banquet here on earth. Nothing else but the divine liturgy in the holy communion. They are all invited to participate in this banquet regularly. Let's see how, how many people we personally know around us that don't respond to this invitation, not only during this time of pandemic. And the obvious example is we see churches filled on Pascha and other great feasts. But everyone is invited to come regularly to every divine liturgy every Sunday and feast days. We should be <clears throat> receiving Holy Communion regularly because through Holy Communion we achieve our union with God in the most concrete way. The union with God we should never break. On the contrary, we are asked to make it more firm on a daily basis. And the best way to do that is through practicing our faith, through receiving <clears throat> the Holy Communion. 
through holy communion, the life of Christ suffers in us and rise with his body and blood, truly is reviving us. When we have intention to receive Holy Communion, we truly need to have an eager desire to do that. Everything in us should be longing for Holy Communion, and we cannot have a disharmony within ourselves. What do we mean by this harmony within ourselves? This harmony is when we approach the sacrament sort of mechanically, without serious preparation. We need to examine ourselves to truly see if everything within us is longing for Christ. We do not want to approach the chalice and holy communion only physically. And our hearts and our thoughts are somewhere else. No. Will is somewhere else. All of this should be in harmony, longing for Christ. We know what it means in our regular life to be longing something, how much all our capacities, our thoughts, our will, our heart unite to achieve that. And how many times we struggle to unite our thought in prayer with our heart. But something else is it. We unite our thoughts and our will and our hearts to achieve our goal. And what is the main goal of our life? We all know to unite with God. Because originally God <clears throat> created a man to live in eternal unity with him. That's why Christ came and reunited the divine and human nature forever. We need to keep examining ourselves to see are we truly ready and eager to unite with God on a daily basis. Is our way of life leading us towards union with Him or leading us the opposite way. If we love God, we should ask ourselves a most important question. Do we also love our fellow man? We cannot love God and despise our fellow man. Our longing for union with God should lead us to our longing and union with all men around us. No matter how they behave, no matter what they do to us, we should be longing to unite with them. <clears throat> Christ said, when you bring your gift before the altar, and you remember that you have something against your brother, or your brother something against you, leave your gift before the altar, go back, make peace, love your fellow man, and come back and offer your gift to God. Not just domination, but the main gift is the prayer. We cannot even pray without making peace with everyone, without loving everyone in our life. Come back and receive Holy Communion after you make peace. Because constant longing for Holy Communion will lead us to constant union with God and fellow man. By practicing our faith.
faith, receiving the sacraments, practicing the divine, divine virtues, we will achieve that.